Back-to-back basketball is nonsense. The last game of a road trip tends to be, what did you call it uh, the other day? You had a word. getaway game. Yeah, the getaway game tends to not work out well in your favor. All of that was leading to a disappointing night. So for me to be disappointed really says something because the expectations were really low. But when Tyrese Maxey came out with the kind of effort he had in the first quarter, and like you mentioned, 21 points, uh, most ever in a quarter by Tyrese Maxey, one of the more electric performances we've seen, and we see a lot of them with Joel Embiid, but when he comes out with 21 and a quarter, four or five from three point range, uh, I forget exactly how many shots. I think it took him like seven shots or something like that to get the 20. It was just completely absurdly insane for him to be that efficient and nobody else to have anything. Just absolutely nothing. And look, I think when you know you heard that Kelly Oubre was going to be out yep. this game, yep. that hurt because he was one of the few players who played with any kind of energy consistently. He's one of the few players you have that can create off the dribble outside of Tyrese Maxey. And it was... they they You can't waste that Tyrese Maxey performance. You just can't do it. Because in the first quarter, you know the Kings were playing relatively soft on Tyrese. Like they were giving him shots that I was a little surprised they were giving him. And he was getting to his spots off the dribble. He was making deep, deep, deep threes. Yep. And they adjusted. And they blitzed him every opportunity, threw two at the ball every time he touched it, and just stared anyone, anyone, to make any kind of a play. Not just a shot, but any kind of a four-on-three read, any kind of a good decision, any kind of attacking uh, um, an opportunity and nobody could do it to a T. Nobody could successfully do that. And obviously, you know, Tobias Harris is going to draw a lot of the ire, deservedly so. He finished five for 15 for his 12 points. Uh, he he blew one of the easiest layups I've ever seen on what was a gorgeous pass from Tyrese Maxey, but really nobody was any good. And like I said, I think when we start talking about this team, and I wrote about this a little bit today about how ineffective Kyle Lowry and Buddy Heald have been um, off the dribble in isolation situations so far at the Sixers. Uh, I think Buddy Heald, and this is going off the top of my head, so I might misquote this a little bit, but Buddy Heald was scoring about two points per game and shooting 44% on drives so far at the Sixers, and Kyle Lowry was like 1.2 points per game on like 42% shooting on drives. Uh, That is just highlighted in a big way when you don't have Kelly Oubre because there is just, I mean, this is the slowest dribble penetration team outside of Tyrese Maxey that I've ever seen right now. Uh, when you start talking about Heald and Lowry and Batum and Tobias, who looks like he's lost a step and certainly lost some confidence, there's just nobody who you trust to make a play off the dribble right now, and it really, really shows. No, so after he scored the 21 in the first, and as you said, n- no matter who they threw at them, whether it was – uh, Malik Monk or De'Aaron Fox, Keegan Murray uh, out there, Harrison Barnes taking his turn, Davion Mitchell in the first quarter coming in, didn't matter. No one could stop him in the first quarter. But once they realized that they can shift their defense a certain way and Davion Mitchell then locked in in the second quarter and in the third quarter specifically there where he did create a little havoc more so for their defense, not necessarily against Tyrese Maxey himself, but overall to break up and bust up the easy pathway that you talked about, no resistance going to the paint. Of course, the step back threes, Davion Mitchell known for his reputation of coming into the NBA with the defensive mindset. And that has been the case in the NBA here uh, so far. I haven't followed the Kings enough to know where his minutes have been this particular season. Out of the last season, he lost his minutes quite a bit in the rotation, but I haven't paid attention enough to see over the last couple of weeks where he has been. That being said, He did make a difference when he came in, face guarding Tyrese Maxey, running all over, busting through screens. He forced two offensive fouls on Paul Reed and Tobias Harris because of him fighting over those screens, them not getting set quickly enough to try to free up Tyrese Maxey to continue to get those good looks at the basket, whether it be from jump shooting from the the perimeter or continuing to drive to the basket, maybe even find some of his teammates for some open looks. But overall, Davion Mitchell, I thought that was a good job by Brown, of course, keeping Mitchell in and Mitchell being in there. And by the way, Mitchell had a 10 point uh, run there in the first half to help the uh, Sacramento Kings out with the scoring. So a cherry on top for them because he's also not necessarily known for scoring. So with that, you needed someone else. And I, I guess they just spilled their bucket. 
right there yesterday yeah. against the Sac against the Los Angeles Clippers, where you get 24 each from campaign and Tobias Harris. We said it during the post game. You cannot expect campaign to again give you another 24 point performance following that one. He might give you a good outing, but not a 24 point performance. So you need to find that elsewhere. And we circled Buddy Hill. Uh, we didn't know about the Kelly Oubre piece, but of course, after the way that he fell, we did say that we'll see what his availability would be like for this game that wasn't there. So who else was going to be there to step up? Could Tobias Harris follow up like we talked about yesterday with another solid performance after that 24 that he had in this in a great start in the first half with his 19 against the Clippers? That wasn't the case again. And while they were in it, they weren't necessarily in it because they were also turning the basketball over, giving opportunities for Sacramento, who likes to run, to get out and run. They couldn't keep Demata Sabonis uh, off the boards. They had too many offensive rebounds as a team where they were collectively doing things uh, on, on that end for the Sacramento Kings. And when even when you look at it and you see certain players like De'Aaron Fox in double figures and a few others in double figures, it wasn't as if they destroyed you. You were in that game for a bit until that third quarter uh, where it really got away from the Sixers. So Maxi did what the all-star Maxi was supposed to do, even if it was the 29 through the three quarters and then giving you a little bit more later on because someone else is doing something. The game is tighter. The game is closer. Maybe he does push that into the mid thirties, maybe the high thirties because of what the game is, what the game uh is giving you at that point and with that maybe he can win you another one but you needed somebody else to step up to give him that opportunity the same way we saw on sunday afternoon with harris and Payne doing their part some of the other supporting cast playing good overall games collectively together to put together really nice performances they needed that they did not get it tonight i know we were asking for a lot to win two games in a row back to back um after a big emotional win that they had against the Clippers on Sunday afternoon. But as you said, you cannot waste that type of start, that type of performance. Someone needed to dig deep and pull something out of their gut to help Maxi and secure this victory. We all silly like the mayor. 